Yeah, it, it, I'm going to just quote from Ruskin. I, I, I believe Ruskin said this one time. If I haven't contradicted myself at least three times in a talk, I haven't said anything. So here's to contradicting myself. But uh, really, it began with this slide to really sort of, sort of give us a sense of where we find ourselves right now. There is a deep separation between the uh, education system and the service industry. And how do we bridge that gap? For us, you know, it has a lot to do with how we can take advantage of these new digital tools in fashioning new relationships, new uh, sort of practice ideas. And it's really part of how we, we test things out at smaller scales, at, at R&D level scales, where we can start to see how we can use these tools to set up these collaborative relationships with manufacturers, with builders, with clients. And so, as, as Hanif was saying, you know, the materials, the systems, the, the traditional materials are there, but how do we fashion new relationships with 21st century technology? Whether it's, it's a masonry facade to meet some, some uh, codes in New York governing certain areas where you have to use 40% of your, your building material has to be masonry, like in, in, in part of Soho and in, in, in lower Manhattan. Um, these, these are the kinds of things that are drawing us into different types of relationships. But the thing about it is that, as Hanif was saying, you know, there's a certain amount of intelligence that we bring to the table, and it's not necessarily valued by the client because the client is really aware of it. So how do we start to evolve a certain new type of transparency? The other thing that we have to deal with is it's a very complex environment to negotiate. This is a diagram from a project we're doing for the East River. And these are all the different agencies, community groups, entities that we have to work with in order to get this stretch of, of parkland developed along the East River. And so there's many different fiefdoms, many different uh, conditions that change over this whole section of two miles. And how does the architect and engineer negotiate those relationships? And that's, that's something that isn't necessarily going to be resolved using you know, these new technologies. We have to rethink how we engage people. How do we share this knowledge? How do we develop a new certain types of transparency? And I'm hoping those are the kind, kinds of conversations that come out of the talks today. Uh, so this is a picture of where this is all going. But, um, the thing that comes out of this is the model that you see over the left is the traditional uh, client architect builder model that is, is sort of been fashioned by the AIA. Uh, but what we're finding uh, over the past 10 years as our practice has evolved is that there are many different models. It depends on the problem, on, on the relationship that you evolve, how those models uh, come about. The other thing is it's not about singularity and software. It's about understanding the use of these tools as things that you apply to help solve those problems. So it's not just one type of tool, it's many different tools used at different scales. So the next sort of step we took was how could we actually develop a project pretty much virtually and fabricate it off-site, actually modeling all the pieces and then actually have it construct by the builder on-site in a in, in, a, in, a, in a fashion that really takes us to another level of, of really thinking about how we see the master model as not something as a just pure design tool, but as something that you're working with the consultants, with the engineers, but also with the fabricators in, in a way that it's a process where you're working the problem before you actually get to the job site. And so what you see on the left is the traditional sort of 2D overlay of the whole mechanical system to what we're all becoming more familiar with, the, the building information modeling process, where we can begin to really understand what we're building in, in that virtual world. Moving from the light tables that the uh, subcontractors overlay and coordinate their drawings to the eye rooms where everybody in the team is in there working the virtual model on a daily basis. So it's, it's an alliteration, it's, it's a process where things evolve in real time. And it moves pure from this idea that the design model is not just a design tool, it's, it's a coordination device. It's, it's a way of 
allowing people to engage this, as I said, in a very real way, and then understanding that, that model actually becomes part of you know, the smart building at the end of the day, that the client, the facilities manager, managers use that model to help inform how their building evolves. And this is something that we're applying to a lot of the projects that we, we are doing right now in the office, and, and with very different cl clients in, in different countries. And I think the last thing I want to end on is, is the fact that we also have to draw the industries forward. The fact is, when it comes to environmental design, we are basically kowtowing to what's in the marketplace. How can we drive the marketplace? How can we work with scientists, engineers, inventors to basically develop integrated systems? This is the IC solar facade invented by Anna Dyson, who will speak this afternoon, but shop invested in, 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 in this company and, and bought the license. So we are actively engaged in trying to bring commercialize this system and really look at how environmental design is actually an integral part of the architecture of the building. And this really evolved out of a relationship between RPI, Rensselaer Polytechnic, and what we see is, is the service side. How can the architects start to help foster this relationship and, and again bring it to the marketplace. And this is an image from the Fashion in Institute of Technology. This is one of the projects which we're looking to install the, the system in. So uh, really it's, it's really looking at many different ways that we leverage the technology to open up these conversations with, with the client, with the manufacturers and, and the inventors, the, the people who are sort of driving the new ideas. Thank you.